Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Let us stand together and praise the Lord singing, Be Thou My Vision. The grace and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I welcome you here this morning to the house of God and to worship. Those of you who are joining with us via the live stream, we, we welcome you. And those of you who are here in the sanctuary, welcome you on this first day of fall. There you go. Yay. We've been waiting for this. It's sweater weather coming, but I hear it's not. Actually, it's going to be a beautiful week, so there you go. Well, this morning, not one of us is here by chance or coincidence. The Spirit of God has drawn you to this place, and so we've gathered for worship and we've gathered for fellowship. And so I invite you at this time to extend to those around you the hospitality and the greeting of Jesus Christ. Let us do that.
it's, it's a dangerous thing to hug with glasses on. I got a nice big smudge here in the middle of my glasses. I can kind of, it's like looking through a smudgy window right there. Anyway, this morning, I, I want to take a moment to especially welcome uh, new members who were uh, welcomed into the fellowship uh, last Sunday, and some of them are here in the sanctuary, but you'll notice that their pictures are included in the uh, insert this morning. I apologize, Judd, uh, his, his name uh, is I'm Hoff, so Judd, welcome this morning. There he is back there. Welcome, Judd. Uh, we're so, so glad to welcome you. And, and the, before I go any further, there's an insert that you can pick, out on your way, pick up on your way out that you can put into your directory, and all of that information is correct. So there you go. I'd like to, uh, John Anderson, is John here this morning? Uh, John, you can see, well, look, you can see what John looks like. And then we want to welcome Becky Bruffy and Justin Welsh. You can guys go ahead and stand up. We're, congratulations there. <laughs> They are actually going to be married. Uh, Steve's going to officiate their wedding here in February, on February 14th. So, uh, woo, there we go. So congratulations to you guys. Welcome. And then uh, Doreen O'Leary is here this morning. Welcome you, Doreen. All right. Doreen, are you any relationship to the O'Learys of Chicago? No. I had to ask. I had to ask because that it was going through my head. Um, the other day. All right. Well, you can also see what neighborhoods they're, they're in, uh, so that just helps you to know uh, where you are at. Uh, those of you who are new members, you have a deacon that is responsible for that neighborhood, and they will be introducing themselves to you, so you will know who your deacon is, um, and you will know what neighborhood you're in. That's probably very obvious to you what neighborhood you're in, but not to the rest of us, so there you go. Uh, let's see. The flowers this morning are, look at this. Oh my gosh, aren't they beautiful too? The flowers this morning are given by Dick and Carol Maxwell in celebration of 65 years of marriage. <laughs> Woo! Well done. And then it's Carol's 93rd birthday and Dick's 98th birthday. So, well done. You, you might see them uh, coming uh, in the second service, so you might pass them in the courtyard uh, after the service. So, give them a big hug. All right, well, let us center our hearts now in the worship of God, so let us pray. O oh God, you are our God, the one in whom we trust. We've gathered today to worship you, to open our hearts and our minds to your presence. We long to meet you here, to hear your voice. Come, on, come among us now in power, pour out your spirit on our thirsty souls, that we may be filled with your goodness and love, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our call to worship this morning it comes from Psalm 89, and you'll find it printed on the inside of your bulletin. I will sing about the wonders of your love forever, O God. I will tell everyone I meet about your faithfulness to all generations. I will declare that your love stands firm that your faithfulness is as enduring as the heavens above. For God is our strength and our protection, the one in whom we trust. Amen. Let us stand together and praise the Lord.
Amen. Brothers and sisters, it is with confidence that we are known and loved by God in Christ. And it is with confidence that he sees the depths of our hearts and he loves us the same. And so we come this morning with boldness and that confidence before the throne of grace. And we offer to God our prayer of confession. So let us pray. Incomparable, unchanging God. You see us, you know us, you love us completely. We are awestruck and we have just sung, you are amazing God. Oh God, out of the flames of your creation, your voice calls to us, calls to us by name marking us as your own. And yet we confess that it is oftentimes easy or easier to ignore your voice or to second guess what it is that you are calling us to do and to be. Sometimes we listen instead to our fears and our failures. And those fears and failures serve only to challenge our faith and our trust in you. Sometimes we hear you and therefore we stubbornly ignore your calling. We don't walk in your way and we don't love as you love. Oh God, forgive us for those times, for you know them. Those times when we have ignored the needs of others for convenience, when we have failed to place our feet upon your path because it was too hard, when we have allowed those inner voices to undermine and distract us from your call. 
And so hear us now as we come before you in this silence and ask that you would refine our hearts with the holy fire of your love. Gracious Lord, in your forgiveness, you offer again your invitation to know your love, to be loved and to respond to your call. And the blazing fire of your spirit refines us and makes us ready and willing for now on to serve you. Amen. Hear these words inspired by Exodus 15 and Revelation 21. The Lord is our strength and our might, and he has become our salvation. The Lord our God is awesome, the king over all the earth, the everlasting God, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And we celebrate good news that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, choir. Wonderful.
Are you in need of hope this morning? Are you in need of hope this morning? Amen. When we watch TV or go to the movies, it's a calls for passive listening, doesn't it? But when we hear the word read and preached, it calls for active listening. We need to be on the edge of our seats as God speaks to us through the word. So let's pray for God to minister to us by his word today. Gracious God, our Father, we are in need of hope this morning, the joyful expectation that you will be faithful to all of your promises to us. And so we pray that by your word you would enable us to receive your word by faith, that we would love you more deeply, that we would follow you more closely. And Lord, we would depend upon you for all things. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. Exodus chapter 4. I'll be reading from verse 1 through 17, and then I'll skip over to verse 27 to 31. Hear now God's word. Then Moses answered the Lord, But suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, The Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to Moses, What is that in your hand? He said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So Moses threw the staff on the ground, and it became a snake. And Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it, and it became a staff in his hand, so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Again, the Lord said to Moses, put your hand inside your cloak. So he put his hand into his cloak, and when he took it out, his hand was leprous, as white as snow. Then God said, put your hand back into your cloak. So he put his hand back into his cloak, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his body. If they will not believe you or heed the first sign, they may believe the second sign. If they do not believe even the two signs or heed you, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and the water that you shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to the Lord, O my Lord, I have never been eloquent, never in the past, nor even now that you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said to him, Who gives speech to mortals? Who makes them mute or deaf, seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But Moses said, O my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron the Levite? I know that he can speak fluently. Even now he's coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall speak for you to the people. He shall serve as a mouth for you, and you shall serve as God for him. Take in your hand this staff with which you shall perform the signs. To verse 27, the Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and he met him at the mountain of God and kissed him. Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord with which he had sent him and all the signs with which he had charged him. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and performed the signs in the sight of the people. The people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had given heed to the Israelites and that he had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We are picking up the story. 
right in the middle of a conversation between God and Moses. Let me say that one more time. We are picking up the story right in the middle of a conversation between God and Moses. Can you even imagine having a conversation with God? Listening and speaking with the creator of the universe. The one who made us from nothing, who breathed life into us, sustains us day by day. Who gave us not only physical life, but more importantly, our spiritual life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now before you dismiss this as something unique only to a chosen few like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and now Moses, it's not as far off as you might think. Right here, right now, we are in the middle of a conversation with God. Listening, and speaking. It started when we walked into the sanctuary this morning or clicked on the live stream. God began to draw us in, to prepare us through seeing and and greeting and meeting our brothers and sisters in Christ. We noticed when we walked in here this morning, we are not alone in this journey of faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. And our hearts were awakened as we looked around this beautiful sanctuary. We listened to the beautiful prelude music, and and the Spirit all the while was awakening us to the reality of God. And a prayer was lifted up by Beth, and we joined in with Beth in that prayer to give this time of worship to the Lord. And there was this responsive call to worship, songs of praise and thanksgiving. Then we confessed our sins. We were given a time of silence. It's never enough time for me. You gave me some extra time. (laughs) To confess to the Lord our sins. A declaration from God's word, God's voice, went to all of us saying, You are forgiven. And we engaged together when the word was read. We heard of God's story inviting us in to meet with him. And and the word right now is being preached. And there's something very mysterious happening up here. I'm aware of it every Sunday when God uses this vessel. God is mysteriously speaking to us through the preached word, through this vessel, reminding us of his promise and his presence his hope and and his love that he gives to every one of us to live our lives. And our response in a little while is, is an offering we are giving to the ministry and mission of God's work in our church, community, and our world. We are agreeing with God as we give that all that we have received, all that we are, everything that we will be given belongs to, belongs to and is given to us by God. And in a little while, we will join in on the prayers of the people. And at the end of the service, the pastor goes up here and blesses us with the word, the voice of God, so that we are blessed to be a blessing throughout the week. The entire worship service is a conversation between us and God. The same God that met with Moses on that mountain over 3,300 years ago. Maybe Moses' experience of a conversation is not as far off as one might think. And speaking of Moses' experience, we too were drawn initially into the presence of God, just as Moses was on Mount Horeb. Now, you may not have come to the Lord for the first time on the actual Mount Horeb with a miraculous burning bush that was not consumed, an angel telling you, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute, better take off those sandals because you are on holy ground. But our search for God, I'm going to say actually God's search for us, was just as life-changing. And yes, for you and me, we were standing in that moment on holy ground. Think for a moment. Of all the contingencies... The thousands of secondary cause and effects that God mysteriously has worked in Moses' story to draw him to that mountain 
to meet with him on that specific day. Now think for a moment. It's going to take you long, longer than a moment, but think of all the contingencies, the thousands of secondary causes and effects that God worked in your story to draw you in and to meet with you for that very first time. When God spoke to your heart at just the right time, when God called you to himself into a relationship, I'm going to call it this morning an ongoing eternal conversation with you just as he had with Moses. Maybe the search and call of Moses is not as far off as one might think. In this encounter with God, Moses' life would never be the same as has ours or will be. Why is our life, why is our life changed so dramatically? Because in a moment, Moses came to find and you came to find that, that you, that we are not alone and we will never be alone. As much as I treasure my earthly relationships, and I treasure them so fondly. I'm so thankful for, for my family and the friends that God has brought into my life. But we know they do not compare with our relationship with God. In our meeting with God, in our conversation with God, we have spiritually gone from one to two. How incredible is that? Going from one to two. What did Tina and Rod sing, one can stand alone in the dark, two can make a light shine through. It takes two, baby. It takes two, baby. Just me and you, you know it takes two. Ooh, ooh, ooh. One, <laughs> one can have a broken heart. One can have a broken heart living in misery. Two can really ease the pain like a perfect remedy. The eternal presence of God in our life is that eternal, perfect remedy. Well, speaking of misery and remedy, Moses, up until this point, he has been living in misery. Let's not forget, he's a felon on the run. He is living in exile. He's away from his family. He's away from his people. It's in this initial meeting, this conversation with the Lord, where he has experienced the remedy found in a relationship with God, the hope and love that his heart has longed for, the hope and love that your heart has longed for, has found its home in God. But let's remember, church, as Moses had to be reminded on that day, that is not the end of the story. Why? He's about to learn that there is a sending connected to his search and call. There is always a sending connected to a search and a call. Remember, what's happening with his people back in Egypt? They are still living in misery. And we're told earlier, the passage that Beth read from last week, that God knows their suffering. This should minister to you this morning. God knows their suffering. He has heard their cry, and God is about to do something about it. Now, this always amazes me. God desires to partner with a human being, Moses, to bring about the remedy, the deliverance of the people of God. When Moses hears of this sending, his responsibility in the deliverance plan to partner with God, Moses is off the charts excited. No, he's not. <laughs> he is resistant and he's reluctant. It begins, did, did you know it? it? It always begins this way, with the but suppose. Or we might say, what if? Those are two very dangerous words when they are partnered together. Wouldn't you agree? What if? What if this happens or that happens? What if they do this or they do that? What if he says this or she says this? It's the downward spiral of uncertainty you experience in your life, don't you? It happened this week. But what if that happens? What if that happens? What if? 
over a decade ago, I went to a pastor's conference in Denver. Right before I left for the trip, I had my yearly blood test taken. I'm walking from my hotel to the host church to hear the next speaker. And I noticed when I pulled out my phone, I missed a call. It went to my voicemail. I shall listen to this voicemail before I go into the church. Hi, Steve. This is the doctor's office. I need to share with you the results of your blood test. Please call us back as soon as possible. Click. <laughs> and I tried calling them back before it was Brueggemann was about to preach. I'm calling them back before Brueggemann's about to preach, but to no avail. I'm sitting there in church between two pastor friends. They know what's going on. They've seen it in their own life. I'm doing the what ifs. And one turned to me and said, Steve, chill out. Calm down. And what have I said before? In the history of calm down, no one has calmed down when told to calm down. <laughs> I made it through the sermon, and I called back. Hi, Steve. We just wanted to share that everything is good and clear. <laughs> I'm a little fired up. I don't want to tell you how to do your job. But could you have said that on the voicemail? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm new on the job. You're probably right. Click. What was Moses' what if? Suppose they do not believe or listen to me. Think for a moment about who Moses is saying this what if to. The sovereign Lord of heaven and earth. All powerful, all present, all knowing creator of the universe. I asked myself during the week, what's really at the center of this uncertainty in Moses? It's not will Pharaoh listen to me, but will my own people? Will the Israelites believe and listen to me? Will they accept my leadership? Is this not the fear of failure? A fear that can paralyze a person from moving forward in faith and in life. A fear that only has its remedy in the presence and the promise of God. What more could we ask for than that? Moses is learning. He's not alone in this. God hears and God hears his concern and provides him with three signs to convince the people. Still Moses resists. He says, I have never been eloquent. In other words, my voice, tone, and vocabulary, they don't have what it takes to persuade or convince anyone of anything. Again, think for a moment who he's saying this to. The creator of the universe. The one who provided Moses with his mouth, his tongue, his vocal cords, and his brain power. And it's still not enough. And Moses finally says what he's been wanting to say all along. Here it comes. Please send someone else. Please. Is God upset? It says God got angry. You bet the Lord's upset. God loves Moses. He knows his potential, what he's capable of. And God knows how he's going to provide for Moses. He's telling him, you can be assured of your success because I'm going to be with you. Not that it's not going to have its challenges. Yet in the mysteriousness of this conversation, as God does also with us, God knows it takes two. He provides Moses with Aaron which makes all the difference in the world. And in God's love and grace, did you notice Aaron was already on the way? Even before the conversation started or Moses was trying to convince God of something, God was already answering the prayer before it was lifted up. This is the way love is. And when the Israelites hear that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob 
had listened to their cry, saw their misery, when they witnessed the signs and wonders God gave to Moses, that Moses gave through Aaron, and when Aaron shared all the words spoken by God to Moses, the people responded with belief and worship. A sign of hope has arrived, and they worship God. It's the end goal of what every sending is leading to, worship of the people of God. This sending stands at our threshold this morning as a church. Just like Moses, we have been called by God to join with him in being messengers of the hope and love of God in a world that needs God more now than ever. Starting today, right now when you leave this sanctuary, there will be countless opportunities to share this hope and love of God in our encounters with every person we come in contact with. When you stand up when this, sanct- when this service is over, you have the opportunity to turn to someone before you leave and give them some encouragement, some love. There will be the visitor in the courtyard that is hoping that someone will speak with them. There's the checker at the grocery store who's hours into their job and they're just going through the motions and you have the opportunity to say, thank you so much for how you serve our community. Well, I'll give you an extra coupon for that. (laughs) There's the server at the restaurant, the friend at the gym, a group of people on that committee you're going to be on this week, a coworker, a fellow student, a teammate, the friend who needs an encouraging text or call this week, a family member who you know is in need of some of your time today, and it could be your next door neighbor or the people you greet along the way on your walk this afternoon. Those people who have the opportunity to see in you the hope and love of God which becomes contagious. And we may be reluctant at times. Let's admit it. There may be some people we'd rather have God send someone else. But remember, it takes two. God is with you. And remember, God has put some errands into our lives to help us out along the way. Speaking of Aaron, my son Aaron was on his way home from working the ranch in Idaho on Tuesday. He stopped in Nevada to take my dad, his grandpa, out for dinner. How cool is that? Is that loving? That's loving. And you may wonder, Steve, did you name your son after the Aaron in Exodus? Not so much. As there was an Aaron I knew in high school. His locker was right next to mine, and every now and then, he would share something about God with this guy who he caught on was searching for meaning in life. And Aaron is one of the reasons why I'm standing up here today. What did Paul, the Apostle Paul, write? How are they to call on the one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in the one in whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him. And how are they to proclaim unless they have been sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Let's keep our eyes open this week to whom God may send us to, that we might be a sign of hope. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for the hope you've given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May your hope fill us. May your love fill us now that it will overflow from our lives this week into the lives of others. Help us to be a sign of hope through Christ. We ask this in his name. Amen. I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward now as we give to the ministry and mission of Laguna Presbyterian Church.
just stand together and give thanks. Praise God from God of all peoples and God of all places, we present these offerings, that they may be used to extend your liberating reign. And with them, we offer our varied ministries, the gifting of this congregation, so that each of us may answer your call and be a part of what you are doing to answer the world's need. In Jesus' name, we give ourselves to you, O Lord trusting in your love for us. Amen. Let us be seated. We continue this morning with the prayers of the people, so let us pray. O oh God, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Though oceans roar in the heart of the sea, O oh God, you are with us. Though the mountains tremble and shake, Though the nations rage, God, you are with us. There is nothing to fear. Nothing can separate us from your love, steadfast in Christ Jesus our Lord. O oh God, in the nations, our hearts break this morning with the violence that is in our world today. And we pray for the peace that you will raise up peacemakers throughout the world. And we pray for wisdom and discernment for leaders. We pray for protection over innocent lives in every place where there is war. We pray for peace to come to Palestine, the Gaza and Israel, to Ukraine and Russia. Oh God, in every place where war is being raged this morning. Places, quite frankly, too numerous to mention. We pray for peace within our own nation, which seems so deeply divided. May we come together for the common good, to be a light, and to do as you have called us to do, to act with justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, O oh God. And we pray for the mission and the ministry of this church. And we give thanks for all those who are gathered here in the sanctuary this morning and for those who are joining us via the live stream. Oh, may we be a people of passion for following Christ and a vision for Christ in our midst. We pray for your comfort for those who are grieving. We pray for your healing for those who are ill or injured. And we pray for your protection for the vulnerable and those undergoing all forms of adversity. Fill them with renewed hope and faith in you. As you have opened our ears to hear your word this morning, our lips to sing your praise, so open our hearts to respond to the needs of those around us so that your healing waters of hope and love would flow through our lives into the lives of others, that your kingdom might come and your will would be done. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
Maggie Craig has announcements for us this morning. But as she's coming, just an announcement that you won't find printed in, the, in, the, in your handout this morning, and that is that the Heritage Foundation has a, a cart outside. Uh, Jack Bell will be there. If you'd like to learn about the Heritage Foundation, and that is those folks as a part of this congregation who have left a, a legacy as a part of uh, their contribution for the ongoing mission of this church. So if you have questions about the Heritage Foundation, you're going to be hearing more about it. Jack is out in the church, on the church patio. So, Maggie. Good morning, everyone. Happy fall. The best season of the year. Okay, we have all our regular things going on this Sunday. Donuts and Alice will be over here on the side for prayer. Um, all the regular stuff going on this week featured in your bulletin. But I just want to highlight a couple of things. I think Crystal is still letting people in to learn how to ring bells next Saturday. So get a hold of her if you want to. Next Sunday, there's a State Planning 101 in the Forest Room at noon. We all need that. And then Love Laguna Beach is two weeks from yesterday. It is Saturday the 5th. And everybody needs your help on a project. As you know, our Gail is kind of running that program. So the website is there to sign up, which you really do need to do in advance. Um, the grief group starts on October 7th and runs for a few weeks in the bride's room on Mondays. We have a blood drive coming up, and that is October 16th. And then, of course, I'm going to pitch family fun night because it is the chili cook-off on October 19th. So we, we need chili, cornbread, and come win all kinds of money in our fabulous bingo and greet all the wonderful new families we have. Um, and if you haven't bought the book yet, for the book talk November 12th, it sounds like a really good one, Close to Death by Anthony Horowitz. Go ahead and buy it. All right, thanks. Thank you, Maggie. Let us stand for the blessing. Jesus said, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. May God bless you this week with hope and love. Amen. You may be seated as we listen to the postlude. Mm -hmm. 